Hello, this is Haskell Hallmark of the Rio Rancho Church of Christ in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And I'm Pastor Mark Tross from Victory Church of God in Grants, New Mexico. And this is Cross Culture, where we try to talk about the cross of Christ in a modern world. You want to read that? Sure. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind and to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, and knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Well, I, as I read that, I think a lot of people watching are, are going to be saying, oh, that's so-and-so, mm -hmm. or that's this person. Mm -hmm. And that's usually what we do when we're mm -hmm. sitting in the middle of a sermon mm -hmm. and the preacher's preaching. We're listening to, oh, or we're nudging our wife or, mm -hmm. or our boyfriend or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, what first of all, we have to, like Jesus said, not criticize those that have a speck in their eye mm -hmm. as much as we need to deal with the inner workings of our heart and mm -hmm. mind as Paul says take every thought captive to mm -hmm. some of these issues because it's not just the written word that brings death the, the black and white letter print mm -hmm. of the word the spirit of it is what Jesus taught about in the Sermon on the Mount you've heard this said but I'm saying unto you such as murder Mm -hmm. Murder isn't just going out and shooting or stabbing somebody or choking them to death. Mm -hmm. Murder is looking at somebody and hating them in your heart. Mm -hmm. And so it's those type of things. As a Christian, we have a much higher standard than, than even what the world holds mm -hmm. themselves to or, or us to. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's critical that the believers out there grab that truth so that we're not just critical mm -hmm. of others that we are self-examining about the self-control aspect of our own spiritual life. As you said, Christians have gotten a bad rep uh, sometimes because of being so self-righteous and judgmental of others. And we're told outright, judge not that you be not judged. Mm -hmm. And in fact, with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. It's an interesting thing. Uh, Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, you referenced his uh, talking about murder. It's a lot more than just actually killing somebody. Mm -hmm. uh, the one that bothers me the most is disobedient to parents. My mom used that against me a lot when I was a kid. <laughs> By the way, that's not really what that's talking about. It's not talking about your children being disobedient. It's talking about your children when they grow up being disrespectful to parents and disobedient to them in the manner in which they were supposed to be taken care of. And in our society, that might be a good thing, too, to look at because we have a tendency to try to shut our, our uh, old folks away in homes and not take care of them at home ourselves when really... Uh, the way it uh, should be is that uh, we should take our parents home. We are God's children. Mm -hmm. How are we towards Him? Mm -hmm. How do we respond towards Him? Are yeah. we obedient to the will of God, to obedient the Word of God? So. And, and again, critical of our own brothers and sisters mm -hmm. when, when we're not rightfully uh, mm -hmm. dividing the Word of Truth ourselves. Okay. And, and so the, what I find here in verse 28 is they did not like to retain God. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we say, well, I know that's what the Bible says, but, but yeah. and well, I don't feel that way about mm -hmm. that particular portion of scripture mm -hmm. or in today's world, mm -hmm. I don't believe that applies. And mm -hmm. so when we get into those gray areas of our own gray matter of our mm -hmm. brain, mm -hmm. we begin to reason out the will of God and the plan of God and the purpose of God. And I think in this case <coughs> here, mm -hmm. or when you go to Galatians 5, where it talks about the works of the flesh versus mm -hmm. the works of the spirit, mm -hmm. they're very contrary to mm -hmm. one another. As a matter of fact, the natural man can't discern the things of the spirit. Very good. And so some of these words that are written down here are so clear mm -hmm. that there is no argument involved. Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand what it says it says, mm -hmm. what God meant he says, mm -hmm. and how we respond to that means we, we can uh, shut ourselves off to the will of God. And unfortunately, it says here that God turns us over mm -hmm. to our own lusts, let's mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we look at this uh, a little more closely, we find also, too, that it's, 
expressing, as you were just talking about, the difference between the way God thinks and the way we think. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people in the world don't want to come to Christ, don't want to come to God because they see these things and they say, man, that's, that's pretty harsh. I don't think I want to bother with that or I don't want to get into it any more detail to find out more. And they literally shut it off before doing so. But you know, it never hurts to have the information. And you can decide what to do with the information after you do it. God's given us that freedom to make that choice. But notice here, the couple of phrases here, he says, they invent ways of doing evil. Uh, the idea of them inventing ways to do evil. Now he's talking about an, an idolatrous uh, pagan world that basically is doing this at that time. But are we really any different today than they are then? Uh, this is really something that's common to man, isn't it? That well, we look for ways of doing evil. I know, I know you read the book Pagan Christianity. Mm -hmm. And uh, when it comes down to things, you'll hear it today, I think, more than probably mm -hmm. in pagan times. Yeah. <laughs> we'll hear that, uh, well, well, that's pagan. Mm -hmm. and, and the truth is, uh, just as Jesus made the statement, you're either for me or against me, mm -hmm. there's no neutral ground. Mm -hmm. Anything that is not for him is against him. Mm -hmm. And therefore, anything that, that is not of God is pagan. Mm -hmm. And we need to understand that it is that big of a divide, mm -hmm. and yet it's that close together. Mm -hmm. You know, you're either for me or against me. There's nothing mm -hmm. neutral there. Now, at the same time, we're talking to a, uh, an audience that perhaps many are of non-Christian mm -hmm. uh, belief systems. And uh, as they look at this, they say, well, where's the place for us then? Uh, not just in the evil that he mentions here, some of whom some people don't think are evil in and of themselves, but can they repent as well? Can they be accepted by God as well? Well, I think what happened with the nation of Israel was they got very exclusive. Mm -hmm. And a lot of churches get that way too. Well, mm -hmm. we're, we're Church of God, you're Church of Christ. There's Baptists, Presbyterians, Methodists. I think mm -hmm. there's well over uh, too many body parts in the body mm -hmm. of Christ. But I think what happens is that we tend to forget the fact that we're called, we're gifted, we're talented, all these things come from God. Mm -hmm and you may not be. That's that's not at all the gospel message. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, Jesus, Old and New Testament, the Bible says, my house shall be a house of prayer for all nations, all peoples, all tribes, mm -hmm. all tongues. And yes, he chose the nation of Israel for their purpose exclusively at the time, and he continues to use them. But today, we, we are way beyond the established beginning of what God had laid out in his plan. And that, that includes the church age itself. And it is as expanded to all nations, not only through programs like this, but mm -hmm. satellite, internet, all around the world. Mm -hmm. and, and it is for all people. One of the things I find in, in this is that when Jesus was speaking to, the, to uh, the, whether it was the woman at the well or Nicodemus, and we kind of shared this at the beginning part of this mm -hmm. program, he didn't come to condemn the world. He came to save the world. But he said, you're condemned already. Mm -hmm. And that's a harsh thing for everybody, mm -hmm. Jew and Gentile. Trace, no. And it's just the truth of God. We are, uh, we are falling away from God. We are steeped in sin from our mother's womb because of Adam and Eve's sin. We have been separated uh, by, of God because of our sin. And so those truths are very hard to deal with, but they are the truth. Mm -hmm. And yet God so loved the world, he gave his son mm -hmm for the whole world, and that's for everybody in the world. One of the things we're going to do occasionally is to take a scripture like we're doing in Romans right here, but then refer to another place where he says something similar or expands on it a little bit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul, who by the way was sent to the Gentiles to preach the gospel, mm -hmm. so the idolaters were uh, acceptable to God if they came to Christ, and here he talks about that. So in verse 9 of 1 Corinthians 6, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't be deceived, neither sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, male prostitutes, homosexual offenders, thieves, greedy, drunkards, slanderers, or swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. Mm -hmm. I think that's one of the most astounding statements in Scripture. It doesn't matter whether you were these things before or not, what you've right. done in the past, Yes, that's sin. Yes, that's what God hates. But he came to die for you. So we have a, in the church at Corinth, he says, and that's what some of you were. But, remember the word but is one of those things that negates everything before it. That's what you used to be. Now we're going to do something different. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our Lord. Clearly, 
that did not keep them from being able to come into the kingdom of God. Yes, they can't inherit the kingdom of God in the state they were in, but when they came to Christ, that all changed. And so we have Christ saving the world. Yeah, well, and Paul the Apostle, who said, I am the chiefest of sinners, yeah. wrote more of the New Testament mm -hmm. than any other writer. Mm -hmm. And as far as books, Luke mm -hmm. wrote more, more words. words. Yeah. But the thing is that the chiefest of sinners, mm -hmm. you know, or where, where the Bible says where sin abounds, grace abounds that much more than mm -hmm. and And the truth is that nothing... Nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. And I have to say the exception, because the Bible says our sin separates us from God. Yeah. And so this particular portion of Scripture talks about mm -hmm. the darkness, the flesh, versus the light and the spirit. Mm -hmm. And those transitions that we were dead in our sin and trespasses, mm -hmm. but now we're alive in Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and hopefully not to willingly and knowingly go out and sin. Mm -hmm. Now John writes in his epistles mm -hmm. that, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father. Right. And again, it doesn't mean, oh, well, God knows my heart. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go out and get drunk or mm -hmm. high or whatever. It, it's, it's the reality of, hey, I am now not what I was then. Mm -hmm. I'm a new creation in Christ. In fact, All that was one of the problems that John was addressing in his epistles was because there was a group that thought, well, the spirit is okay, so the flesh doesn't matter. I can go ahead and do in the flesh whatever I want, right. but the spirit is still cleansed. And uh, John says, no, no, you can't sin anymore when you're, when you're in Christ. doesn't mean you cannot sin. It means you right. shouldn't sin, really. And, and going back to Romans here for just a minute, I want to remind you, that Paul is laying out a story here. He's laying out an idea. Chapter 1, he addresses I the idolaters or the pagans. Chapter 2, he addresses the Jews, which, by the way, you're going to see in a minute, he doesn't uh, hold back on them either. Uh -huh. <laughs> but his whole point is, in chapter 3, there are none righteous, mm -hmm. no, not one. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, of course, that leaves us with no hope, right? No, that's the whole point of this mm -hmm. story, is that there is hope. And he continues with that and shows us that hope then. Well, let me, let me say that the rich okay. young ruler coming to Jesus, what mm -hmm. must I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. and, and he says, well, good, good master or good Lord. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, why do you call me good? Mm -hmm. There's none good but God. And as mm -hmm. you said, it doesn't leave us hopeless. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness, I don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do because of what Jesus did. Right. And that, that's the key. This all comes down to Jesus, mm -hmm. and it focuses on him. Mm -hmm. He's the one who leads us to the Father. He's mm -hmm. the one who forgives all of this sin, all mm -hmm. of our trespasses. And, and it's so important that we grasp that, because without him, we don't have life. One last comment before we go into chapter 2 on this. Uh, I watched uh, a couple of shows last night, one of which is the new uh, Bible program that's on, which is very dramatized and kind of iffy when you get to the actual truth of the scripture on it but it's interesting what they show sometimes but typically in our movies or our tv programs your religious people are fanatics or weirdos or in some other way uh, immoral uh, they're they're hypocrites or whatever mm -hmm. by the way i got some of those in my church how about you I mean, that's, that's just reality I of life. I refuse to answer you refuse. on the grounds of <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, never mind then. But uh, the point is, we're people. We're human. We're going to make mistakes. But when you think that all Christians are hypocrites, you're missing the point. We're trying, but we're not perfect. And if all idolaters are just doing evil things or all uh, pagans are doing evil things, the fact is there's some pretty nice people out there who are, who are not in Christ. Right. right. And we get confused sometimes. The world gets confused especially. But he's going to make it very plain as he goes through here in Romans, you still have to be in Christ. And that's why being a good person is not good enough. Not good enough. We could never be good enough. If we mm -hmm. could, Jesus would have never have had to come to die mm -hmm. for our sin and trespasses. Well, just as an example, this, this list of evil things, well, I've never done any of those. Uh, you know, I'm not a drunkard. I'm not a gossip. I'm not a, a murderer or an adulterer. You know, okay, fine, good for you. But that's not enough by itself. There's more that he says here, and you've got to follow that as well. All right, now he goes into the Jews, chapter 2. God's Brace righteous. yourself. Brace <laughs> yourself, that's right. You therefore have no excuse. Boy, that's a strong start, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself, because you who pass judgment do the same things. Now, we're going to see in a minute that this is the Jewish uh, community that he's talking to at this point. But just think about it for a moment, that whole point of self-righteous judgment. 
is condemned over and over again by Jesus mm -hmm. early in his ministry all the way through in the epistles, in the workings of the early church, in the apostles, in the writings. The Holy Spirit was very strong in making sure that message got across that self-righteous judgment is not what Christianity is supposed to be about. Well, that's why Jesus came down so hard and heavy on the scribes and the mm -hmm. Pharisees. And they, they were mm -hmm. taking uh, something that God had given them and they were putting a heavier weight to it. And it was unnecessary in the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. Then on top of that, they were failing to live accordingly themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, it, he's going to say it actually in a little bit. He says, uh, you know, if you're guilty of one point in the law, you're guilty of the whole thing. So we come back here then. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think that you will uh, escape God's judgment? Uh, there's a tendency, it seems, for people who think they're righteous to think that they're not really going to be judged by God the way everybody else is. And, of course, he's saying, come on now. Do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you towards repentance? Man, that's an indictment in itself. Mm -hmm. We should realize that we're here because of God's kindness, God's tolerance, God's mercy. Um, we see that in Titus when he talks about the kindness and love of God appearing and how we receive grace then because of the washing of regeneration and renewing of our minds with the Holy Spirit. We see here he's saying, are you showing contempt for God's riches. It's an amazing thing that he's emphasizing here because he's trying to show just what uh, John said uh, when Jesus, he quoted Jesus in John chapter 3, God so loved the world that he sent his only son to be, uh, uh, be killed for us. Mm -hmm. But he did so to save us, not to condemn us. Right, and he, and he wishes that none would perish, mm -hmm. that all would come to repentance. Those are, mm -hmm. those are big words, none mm -hmm. and all. When we mm -hmm. know that many, many are going the way of destruction mm -hmm. and that only, the, the, only to enter in the straight and narrow way through Jesus, he is mm -hmm. the only way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. And so some of those clear pictures of God's heart, again, loving the world that he mm -hmm. sent his son, we can't be exclusive in this world that we live in mm -hmm. when, we, when it comes to the gospel. When, no mm -hmm. matter what church we belong to, there's only one true church. And there's only one head of the church, and that's mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Those, those, are, those are biblical truths, whether we agree or disagree. Mm -hmm. That's what God has set in place, and it's so important. Mm -hmm. He wishes that none would perish, that all would come to repentance. And repentance sounds like a big, heavy word, but it means to turn and do differently, to mm -hmm. make it right, to turn towards God. Mm -hmm. And so I, I heard a pastor years ago uh, somebody had come up to him and said, oh, I just can't stop lying. And mm -hmm. he says, yes, you can. Tell mm -hmm. the truth. And so mm -hmm. we have to understand. But without knowing the truth, we can't be set free. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is the truth. All right. Romans chapter 2, starting at verse 3. Because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath against yourself for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will, re will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what he has done. There's the judgment statement of fact. Whatever you do, you're going to be judged accordingly. To those who by persistence in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality, he will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking and who reject the truth and follow evil, there will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble and distress for every human being who does evil, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. Glory, honor, and peace for everyone who does good, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. God does not show favoritism. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to note that there was a, there's been historically conflicts within the body of Christ, within Christians who didn't understand this fully and treated other peoples uh, harshly, wrongly, as if they weren't uh, people at all in some mm -hmm. cases. Uh, our own history in America. Uh, taking Africans and bringing them over and making slaves of them and then treating them as if they were animals rather than as people. Not everybody did that who were slave owners. But or here in New Mexico, the Native Americans. Native Americans. We're not talking about something that's unique to uh, just American history. And we say, well, history shows that that's been the case for thousands and thousands of years. That doesn't excuse it. The behavior still is, if we seek glory, honor, and peace, we want to do good. And notice here the Jew first and then to the Greek. He starts off in chapter 1 with that. 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And he actually talks about that and, and, and shows that this is going to be going on all the time. It is an ongoing thing. Um, God, uh, it's the power of God for salvation of everyone who believes, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. The gospel is where the righteousness of God is revealed. Here he's showing people's behavior and he's saying judgment will be, and by the way, that is the righteousness of God, isn't it? The judgment that he's going to do according to our actions. He's not going to judge unrighteously. He's not going to show favoritism either. So nobody has an advantage. Uh, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, the color of your eyes. Now, we happen to be blue-eyed, white-skinned people for the <laughs> most part. But uh, the fact is, it doesn't matter who we are. Uh, I was fascinated by the Ge Human Genome Project. Uh, I think I mentioned mm -hmm. it to you a few months yes. ago. The um, evolutionary biologist insisted that there had to be a significant DNA difference between, say, the pygmies of the Congo and the uh, Watusi or Maasai of uh, Northeast uh, Africa. I mean, the Watusi and Maasai are regularly seven and seven and a half feet tall, and the pygmies are rarely over four feet tall. And they said, surely there is a significant difference here. And they did the Human Genome Project and found out that there was no more than a point zero zero two percent or something like that mm -hmm. difference, even between somebody so obviously different in their appearance as those two peoples were. Well, God looks beyond the skin and beyond the structure of the body because he created those in the first place. He doesn't care what the color of the skin is. He cares what the color of the heart is. And right. the color of the heart's the same in every human being. And it's our heart that he wants. And when I say heart, I'm not talking about the physical pumping organ. I'm talking about the soul. I'm talking about the individual and what he wants. So here he says he does not show favoritism. You want to talk about that a little more, too? Well, I, I think it's so important that we get that because uh, we have this ex exclusive mentality. Well, I'm Jewish, mm -hmm. and so therefore I'm in. And I actually have Jewish blood in me. Mm -hmm. But it's not by that. Paul goes on to explain mm -hmm. this throughout his writings, mm -hmm. that your pedigree uh, has nothing to do with your relationship with God. It, mm -hmm. it might be, well, I was born here, or I have this much money in the bank, or mm -hmm. my parents are this, mm -hmm. but God is no respecter of persons. And as mm -hmm. you said, he looks at the heart. He looks at the inner workings of the man, his mm -hmm. thoughts, his words, his deeds. Mm -hmm. the, that, that's who we are. Everything I say, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. And so when some of these things that we read in chapter uh, 1 here uh, are coming out of my mouth, that means there's something wrong with my heart. Mm -hmm. And so, and we all bleed the same. You know, the covenant of blood is so crucial. There's only one human race. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we don't have different races, although we say, well, this color, that color. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we may talk different languages, but there's only, we all and everyone on the planet, we could say, well, we came out of Shem, Noah, and Japheth, after uh, mm -hmm. Shem, Ham, and Japheth, mm -hmm. after the flood of Noah. But we all come, and actually DNA tests have proved that everybody on the planet, no matter where they live, has come from one woman. Mm -hmm. And that's totally biblical. And so here's mm -hmm. a case that you can throw out that to means. everybody where science proves what mm -hmm. the Bible has said from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so God does not respect the persons, mm -hmm. but the gift and the call mm -hmm. might be different. And that's what we need to understand. The place, mm -hmm. the position in the body might be mm -hmm. different. Doesn't mean that it's less important or less of a person. Sure. And as you said, human history has played out time after time mm -hmm. that I'm this and you're not. And so therefore I'm better and you're worse. And that is not the case in God. Somebody once said, and I think it probably makes more sense than anything I've, else I've heard on the subject, God sees two races of people on earth, those that are his and those who are not his. That's all. Color has nothing to do with it. Location has nothing to do with it. Wealth, <laughs> that's a, even ludicrous to think that wealth would have anything to do with it. But we tend to look at those externals rather than at the internals. But God looks right. at the heart. All who sin apart from the law will also perish apart from the law. All who sin under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not those who fear the law who are righteous in God's sight, but it is those who obey the law who will be declared righteous. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. Since they show that the requirements of the law are written on their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness, and their thoughts now accusing, now defending. This will take place on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. The heart. Um, apparently those who didn't know the law could still live by the law. That sounds like it goes back to the creation to me. 
<laughs> I mean, we talk about fallen man, but the fact is God created within us a desire to serve him, didn't he? And from the very beginning, we have a desire that uh, we are actually trying to do the right thing in his sight. And yet people still reject him. Even those who know his written law uh, were rejecting the written law or were not, not following it properly. Mm -hmm. But those who didn't have that written law still were living. I'm reminded of Cornelius in the book of Acts. Right. Here's an individual. He was a, a centurion of the uh, Italian band, he says, which means he was a Gentile. He was not a Jew. But he was recognized by God as a God-fearer, as someone who recognized God's truth and lived accordingly. He gave alms to the poor is one of the things it specifically mentions, which seems to be a bigger issue in the Old Testament than what we realize, is that we we look at our people out on the street corners today, and, well, they're con men as far as we're concerned. And I'm talking about people in general. But God says, you know, when you're doing the right thing, even if you don't have the law, I'm going to judge you accordingly. Now, that was before Christ came, is what mm -hmm. I understand. But now that Christ has come, we have to be in Christ no matter what. But there are still going to be those in Christ or in the Jewish faith, the righteousness of that time, uh, that were knowing better and still doing wrong. And he says, I'm going to judge them too. And we're not going to be <laughs> without excuse when judgment day comes yeah. to say, oh, I didn't know that when mm -hmm. God knows that you knew it. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, I really didn't do that mm -hmm. when he knows you really did. Mm -hmm. And, and so the idea of, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the scripture says it's evil and wicked. <laughs> and, and so not a pretty picture, we, right? we need to understand, for as mm -hmm. much as I've been saved 31 years, mm -hmm. I realize that there's more stuff in me, obviously, mm -hmm. that God is working me through mm -hmm. and taking me out of. Mm -hmm. And it's always a glory, glory, grace to grace type mm -hmm. of workings because mm -hmm. we're, we're passing from this place towards eternity mm -hmm. with him. And he's preparing his bride to make us all into the image of his son. And so it's so important that we grasp our individual and corporate mm -hmm. reality to playing out that, that mm -hmm. truth. Okay. The last verse there in this section, this will take place on the day when God will judge men's secrets through Jesus Christ. Now, secrets implies that nobody knows about it. Obviously, God knows it. So it's not hidden from him, right? And he says, this will happen as my gospel declares. He's declaring that gospel in a little bit fuller form in these chapters that he's re writing right here. The Holy Spirit through him is giving us that message. Um, there are some people that think there's going to be no judgment for anybody, that uh, we're not really expecting uh, God to be the God of judgment, for example. And more recently, <clears throat> there's been books written saying there's no hell. Yeah. Well, I will, I will just say, not to believe us, believe God. Mm -hmm. Not to believe any any other spirit, any other angel, even Paul right. talks about. Right. Believe God. This is God's word. Believe mm -hmm. that. Act on it. You'll receive it, and mm -hmm. you'll move in that, and so will others. Okay. We'll see the difference. My name is Haskell Hallmark. I'm with the Rio Rancho Church of Christ in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And this is Pastor Mark Tross of Victory Church of God in Grants, New Mexico. And this has been Cross Culture, and we pray that you'll come and be with us again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.